Okay, so I was asked by Jenny to share a few thoughts on something that the Lord has given me revelation on in my life and something that maybe the Lord has used to change my life in a um, impactful way. So recently, I feel like the Lord has really been communicating with me about um, worthlessness and my worthiness. I feel like the Lord um, has really been stirring in my heart that there's been some opportunities to do ministry and do things that would really encourage women, um, which is something I, I feel passionate about in my heart. And I have maybe neglected um, those opportunities because of a worthiness um, issue that I have. And um, I guess it starts way back at the beginning. So I just want to take you there, tell you a little bit about it, and tell you what the Lord has really been speaking to me about it. Um, I feel like in the high school through college days, I really lived a lost life. I grew up in the church and I had known who Jesus was, you know, in my mind. I had a clear picture of everything he had done for me, but I really hadn't taken that into my heart just yet. And so during that time, I just lived away from the Lord. I was searching, I was immature, I was lost. And so I did what every teenage girl um, during this time who's struggling with identity and sin does. I was just partaking in everything the world has to offer. And during that time, it was just, um, it was a miserable, empty time in my life. As I look back on it now, living in the full fullness of God and living in the full fullness of who I am now in Christ, I feel like during that time I look back and there's a heaviness in my spirit about it and about who I was and about, um, the people that I was interacting with during that time, I feel like that is something the enemy continues to use in my daily life. I feel like it's something that he makes me smaller with. I feel like it's an area that he really has me bound in. So um, as I try to step out in ministry, I feel like I have a band of accusers um, and they all start speaking to that past life and they all start saying like no one is ever going to see you in any other light than that sinful light especially people who knew you during that time and when you begin to speak out people are going to call you out on it they're going to call your bluff they're going to call you and say like who are you to speak on these great spiritual truths um you you're a sinner. You're robed in these filthy rags. And so that's how I felt. I felt naked almost. I felt like when they saw me, um, it was just a really gross feeling on the inside that when they would see me, that that's all they would see, that they would just see the old me. They would not um, be able to see through that and see that I've changed. I've become somebody new. And um, it was just my heart's desire to move on from that and to be seen in a new light. Um, because that's who I am now. And I, I felt like as I was crying out to the Lord about what do I do and how do I move past that so that you can use me and I can be effective in my walk today and, and for right now. And I feel like something the Lord spoke to me in that moment was, you are not robed in that anymore. You are now robed in my righteousness. Quit walking around like an orphan child in rags. And don't allow the enemy to stir those feelings of orphanhood and filthiness um, up in you when I want to use you because that is not who you are. So I just felt like the enemy is such an accuser and he is so ready to stir inadequacies in me so that I would stay silent and comfortable and in a corner um, versus stepping out in faith and shining a light into the world. I feel like one of my gifts is encouragement and this was just hindering me. This was, this was something I needed freedom from. And I just felt like in those moments as the Lord was speaking to me, he gave me an image of myself that was me standing there in this rich, flowing white robe. It was so white, it was glowing. And it was like, they don't see you, Jennifer, when they look at you anymore. They see me. Because when you get married, the two become one. And I feel like it's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. When we invite God into our hearts to, to live with us and dwell 
within us. The two of us become one. We become a part of his spirit and he becomes a part of our flesh. And so I feel like he was just like, stop living in that old identity that has been shed, that has been cast off from you. You are a new woman in Christ and you are robed with the richest robes of righteousness that there are to offer while here on this earth. And that just a weight lifted and I just felt like yes Lord yes that is who I am I will not allow the enemy to lie to me like that anymore so I was looking up verses that confirm the truth that I felt like um, God was speaking to me that day and I found Zechariah 3 3 and 4 and it says now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away those filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. Man, isn't there such freedom in that? That we are not bound and chained to who we used to be and our old identity and our old self. That there is a physical shedding of that and a two becoming one. The Holy Spirit coming in, setting up shop inside us and saying like, hey, when you're doing ministry and you're speaking out truth and life, that when people look at you, Jennifer, you're not standing there naked and in tattered rags. But you are robed in my righteousness. And when they see you, they see me. I mean, there is such freedom in that. So I just felt like maybe there's other women who are bound in that as well. That you feel inadequate in some way. You feel that when people see you, they see that inadequacy. And I just wanted to encourage you today that... You're not robed in that, ma'am. Not anymore. That God has something better and greater planned for you. And that when they look at you, you shine bright the light of Jesus. You have an aura around you of holiness and righteousness because he dwells within you. It would be impossible for them to see anything except the new you. And so... I just felt the Holy Spirit pressing me forward saying, um, Jennifer, you've just been breathing in all of this truth. You've been growing in wisdom um, and love and righteousness. And it is time to exhale. It is time to begin breathing out all that you've been taken in and, and to not allow yourself to stay stagnant and comfortable, but to push yourself out there and let me prove to you that you can be effective and you can do these things because I'm going to be doing them through you and they won't see you. They will see me. So I, I just wanted to encourage women that if you're out there and this is something that you've struggled with and this is something that has held you back from ministry, I just pray that you press through that and that you just prayerfully consider that um, those are not the images that people see of you and that people see Christ in you and see the good in you um, and that you are worthy and capable of taking up this cross and bearing this ministry um, because God has put passion and purpose in our hearts, and I feel like we do ourselves a disservice to not pursue those avenues, um, and that there are women who need us to be active in our callings and need us to be actively pursuing those things in our lives. Um, they need our encouragement. They need us to come alongside them. And so um, something that Jenny said to me that just kind of confirmed this message for me when she was texting me and asking me to share my heart on a revelation is she said, um, she, she texted me an emoji of a tree, and she just said, I felt like using this emoji. And she said, I see you like this mature tree planted with deep roots. You're a deep well of wisdom from the Lord. And I just felt like that's the Lord confirming. That's what she saw when she saw me. And so it was just confirming a truth he's already been speaking in my heart. And so I appreciate her rising up in this ministry opportunity and encouraging me to step out on faith and, and do something new break new ground, find a new way to minister, or just be more confident and bold in the areas and the land the Lord has already given you. So the enemy is a liar. We all know that, but maybe someone else just needs to hear that today. The enemy is a liar and his perspective is never from a place of authority and it just needs to be treated as such, okay? So the words that uh, he speaks need to be treated with in accordance of the person that he is 
and with the authority that he does not have over us and over our lives. So let's not give away those areas, especially the ones that God is uniquely calling us to. Let's rise up. Let's be the church. Let's encourage and love one another. I love y'all, and I hope that you hear this word, and it just stirs something in your heart. May God go with you and be with you, and you would be blessed.